What if I tell you that this ride didn't fail by accident? It broke exactly how the people in charge knew it would. That brand new thrill ride that you see here is the 360 Pendulum at Saudi Arabia's Green Mountain Resort. And on July 30th, 2025, 24 riders, including kids, lunged towards the ground as the pendulum steel arm snapped mid-swing. A hairline crack had been logged weeks earlier and ignored. And when you see who signed off on these inspections, you'll realize this wasn't just a mechanical failure. It was a cover-up hiding in plain sight. In the evening on July 30th, 2025, the usual heat spell finally calmed down, so families gathered at the Green Mountain Resort above Taif to enjoy the weather. At the time, Saudi Arabia wanted to show the world that it can match Dubai and Orlando in tourism and engineering. That led them to build a scenic destination at Al Hada Hills in 2018. Open under the Abdul Mohsen Al Hokair Group, the resort covered 1.5 square kilometers featuring imported botanical gardens, adventure zip lines, and European-style attractions. At the center of it all was their star attraction, the 360 Pendulum, a 24-seat monster ride that rose 200 feet into the air and swung strong enough to pull two Gs of force. The manufacturer's documentation described it as a fully compliant EN13814-2019 ride, meeting European mechanical and fatigue safety standards. On paper, it was everything the country wanted to showcase. However, they didn't take one thing into consideration. Taif has a harsh climate, where daily temperatures often exceed 35 degrees Celsius, and nights drop below 15 degrees Celsius. That temperature swing, while common for the region, introduces one of engineering's most silent threats, thermal fatigue a slow process that can harden and crack metal over time. By 2025, the pendulum had endured tens of thousands of cycles. If the ride wasn't maintained properly, all that strain could have put it at serious risk. Earlier that July, the maintenance staff noticed just that, a two-inch hairline fracture at the main pivot joint, where the massive steel arm that swung the gondola was attached. However, the operators only logged the issue as observation only, instead of scheduling a repair. The crack was left unchecked, turning a routine note into a ticking time bomb. Management's decision to label it within operational tolerance kept the ride running, but when the scheduled inspection was delayed yet again, every extra spin only pushed the metal closer to failure which makes one wonder why they were so adamant about keeping it running. It was the summer, peak season for the Green Mountain Resort, which meant larger crowds and more money. Running on tight deadlines, any downtime meant losing about 500 visitors. As the tourists kept coming and the ride kept pushing through each heat cycle, the crack deepened with every turn. In the days leading up to the accident, warning signs multiplied. The ride began to shudder violently, its swing stretching a few degrees past its normal arc. Each run strained the structure further. Operators felt the vibration deepen, heard the metallic rattle grow louder, but stopping mid-cue wasn't an option. Every shake, every groan in the steel was a symptom ignored. Operators dismissed the rattle as normal wear, clearing the ride for another day. But that normal day became the calm before the storm masking how deep the fracture had truly grown. With that false calm, pressure rebuilt fast. July 30th arrived, and with crowds surging, management pushed for longer ride cycles to keep the lines moving. Each pass loaded more weight, more heat, more torque, unknowingly forcing the pendulum towards its breaking point. In engineering terms, this was the start of compounded fatigue, a cycle building beneath the surface. Every night's cooling tightened the crack, every hot morning expanded it wider, and every spin pulled the arm one millimeter closer to disaster. The ride was one of the park's highest earners, operating many hours a day and generating around $10,000 in revenue. 
closing it during peak season would have signaled a failure of Saudi Arabia's vision to compete in the global tours industry. Consequently, the pendulum kept running. By nightfall, the mountain air cooled sharply, and that was the final trigger. When technicians ran the standard startup cycle, no warnings appeared. The system cleared every check, and the faint line across the arm was dismissed as harmless. Imagine an elastic band already stretched to its limit. How long before it snaps? That's the kind of pressure now building on the pendulum ride. Bystanders excitedly filmed with their phones as the gondola rose higher than usual. For a moment, the pendulum froze at the top of its arc, and before anyone could blink, a faint ping turned into a metallic crack. The arm split just below the upper pivot assembly, where the gusset meets the core beam. The gondola slammed into the fractured arm mid-swing, twisting violently before hitting the ground. The entire structure folded inward, causing the cabin to crash into the concrete deck. Within seconds, the bright neon lights that once lit the 360 pendulum flickered and went dark. Witnesses described screams, dust, and the sound of metal grinding against itself. Families rushed forward before rescue teams could arrive, clawing through the wreckage with their bare hands. Official reports confirmed 23 injuries, out of which three were highly critical. The most heartbreaking, however, was the death of young Wada binti Aziz Alfami, who succumbed to her wounds after transfer to Riyadh. Ironically, the structure's fall angle spared more lives than it claimed. When the arm snapped, it dropped nearly straight down, and the impact followed the steel's strongest axis, absorbing energy through its frame. If the ride had tilted or rolled during the fall, its weak as wells would have taken the full hit. Seats with people could have been crushed, causing far worse injuries or deaths. In engineering terms, this was a grim form of controlled collapse. In response, Prince Saud bin Nahar, governor of Taif, launched an urgent probe and shut down the resort. Yet, as investigators uncovered underdimensioned arms and hidden gussets, the cause became clear. Management shortcuts had set the disaster in motion. Analysts now believe the arm itself was underdimensioned. While its diameter met design codes, its wall thickness didn't leave enough fatigue margin at the pivot gussets, where the heat affected zone is most vulnerable. That brings us to the gussets, the triangular plates connecting the arm to the pivot. They handle the highest stress concentrations and that's exactly where investigators later found the first fracture. Under normal conditions, well filler metal is stronger than the pipe at joints. However, it still has a weakness at the heat affected zone, where heat changes the steel's microstructure, making it brittle. That's where the cracks start. But if the cracks are easily visible, why did no one raise alarm bells outside the inspection team? Well, that was because of its cosmetic design. A decorative lighting sheath covered the arm for aesthetics, hiding the gussets completely. Even during investigation, before conducting a deeper analysis, the officers only saw polished metal, unaware of the cracks beneath. This hidden gusset wasn't the only culprit behind the tragedy though. Investigators quickly realized the failure wasn't just mechanical, it was managerial. Routine welding and patch jobs had been outsourced to local shops that usually fabricated window frames, not precision ride components, all to save money. Those welders lack certification for amusement ride maintenance, a direct breach of international safety standards. The investigation logs revealed even more. Inspection reports were backdated, and maintenance sign-offs were often approved without physical checks. Each revelation built the tension higher. The problem had moved from metal fatigue to human compromise. That night, when videos of the collapse went viral on social media, actor Fayez Al Malki came forward, revealing the true depth of the management's ignorance. Fayez stated that he had already warned the Taif municipality and even the governor's office two years earlier that Green Mountain's rides were unsafe, but clearly no care was taken. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 had promised that accountability would reach everyone up to the crown prince, so the probe expanded. Local authorities called in international engineers from Riyadh and European ride system consultants, 
What began as a search for a broken beam was now an investigation into the country's safety culture itself. Beneath the twisted steel, they began mapping fracture lines, collecting samples, and reviewing maintenance logs. From engineers and maintenance technicians, to management and regulators, every layer of organization was under microscope. And yet, just as the public began to believe justice was coming, another revelation would reset the stakes entirely. Early metallurgical analysis suggested fatigue failure as the main course. According to analysts, rides this big need strict safety checks. Wells need to be tested every few months with ultrasonic methods, especially in harsh climates. But were these rules ever really followed? Repeated day and night temperature swings, 35 degrees Celsius heat, followed by 15 degrees Celsius cool, expanded and contracted the steel until microscopic cracks spread through the heat affected zone beside the weld. Over six years, those cracks multiplied until the arm finally tore. At first, this seemed like a clear conclusion, a technical error tied to nature itself, but that sense of closure didn't last long. Each new report reopened tension, revealing that human oversight, not the climate, bore the real blame. The engineers later clarified that the weld itself hadn't failed, the surrounding steel had. Turns out the arm's tubing was rated at less tensile strength compared to the weld fiber. So the weakest spot was never the weld line. It was the nearby parent metal slowly hardening and cracking under stress. In other words, the steel didn't break the rules, the people responsible broke the system. Adding to the problem was the decorative lighting sheath that covered the arm for aesthetic purposes. It concealed the actual load-bearing frame beneath, making visual inspection nearly impossible. Since no one could see the errors, management got away with quick repairs by local metal shops. But don't parks this big usually have third-party reviewers to ensure everything runs smoothly? Why didn't they spot anything this time? For the garden resort, maintenance logs were handled in-house, which meant that there was no independent verification of structural integrity. And as we saw, even the routine global standard, mandatory non-destructive testing after each set of cycles, which should take no more than a few minutes, was never done. When the drive motors themselves came under scrutiny, another question was raised. Could the ride's own machinery have pushed it past the breaking point? or was there something more deliberate involved? Engineers found signs that the motor torque may have been increased to make the ride complete full rotations faster. It's a common, risky tweak used to boost thrill value. The faster the ride is done, the faster the next one can begin, ultimately generating more revenue. However, in mechanical systems, even a marginal increase in torque beyond rated design multiplies the bending moment along the arm. And over time, that load variation exceeded the steel's endurance limit far beyond what the manufacturer's specifications intended. That revelation hit like another snap, but this time, it wasn't metal breaking, it was public patience. In short, it wasn't one error, it was several. A weakened heat zone, hidden cracks, uncertified repairs, and no outside oversight, topped off by excessive torque. Officials temporarily suspended similar pendulum rides across Riyadh and Jeddah, providing a fleeting sense of safety. But even that relief collapsed when inconsistencies between local licensing laws surfaced, showing how Vision 2030's rapid growth had raced ahead of regulation. Each city had its own rules, its own shortcuts, and the cracks weren't just in the steel anymore. They were in the system itself. By the time the final reports were released, Green Mountain Resort was bankrupt, public trust shattered, and Saudi's tourism flagship moment turned into its biggest cautionary tale. Ironically, the management that once tried to save 500 visitors now had to close it entirely, facing massive financial losses. But in this next video about the train collapse in Serbia, this little child who was patiently waiting for his mother to buy tickets wasn't so lucky.